There we go. There we go. All right. It takes a while. Well, it's the same link as uh, our regular meeting, so, you know. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. They made it easier for everybody, I think. <laughs> so who are we going to fire today? I don't know. <laughs> well, we did a... I saw we brought Man uh, Montero back for three years. And that was good. I wonder who made that decision. I mean, I know who did the signing. Uh, I guess Crane did, but... Uh, I don't know who number two is at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I looked up, uh, we were talking about what Stearns yesterday. Is that his name? Yeah. And he said he's not going to anybody. He take his name out of contention for everyone. So I don't know. He's probably making a whole lot of money this year from Milwaukee as part of his original contract, is my guess. And oh. uh, for sitting out, you know, he's still a consultant for them. <clears throat> For another year so that's my thinking on it uh i was kind of surprised not the daniels the former general manager of the rangers was hired by the uh tampa bay team uh yesterday wow i mean that'd be a natural for uh, our boy to go back to but um, anyway that didn't take long I, I i guess i guess we can ask around i mean i have no idea who would want to come here I mean, it's a great situation, but you got to give up, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean you want to be in charge. And if you can't be in charge, that's another issue. Um, Tal can tell you about that. <laughs> but yeah, John I don't know that. They're, they're kind of, they're kind of comparing uh, the Astro situation uh, and Crane to Jerry Jones. I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> It sounds that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Oh, uh, Jones claims he is the general manager too. He he doesn't pretend. He says he is. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. so I don't know. Craig, hello. <laughs> Here, let me. All right. Craig is joining. Craig, how you doing? You're on mute. I'm doing fine. How are you? Just fine. Just fine. Um, where are you from? I'm, I'm, I live in Bay City. Bay City. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I rejoined uh, Sabre about a year ago, or a little less than a year ago, I guess, sometime this year. Oh, all right. So I've been a member a long time ago, and so do you, uh, you know, Bob? I do, I do. I don't. Our um, former president. Hello, Bob. Hey, how are you? Fine. Welcome. Thank you. He said Bay City, huh? Yes. And Karen's on the line. She's muted too. She's muted too. Yeah. I would guess, Craig, that you're about as far away from um, where we hold our regular chapter meetings as I am. Where are you? <laughs> I'm in the uh, Splendora, Cleveland area, north of um, town, about about 25, where, where, 30 minutes, 30 minutes north the, of the bush. Where are the meetings? Uh, off Shepherd, on uh, Shepherd Drive in Houston. That's about seventy miles for me. Seventy-five, maybe. Oh, okay. All right. So you're about 10, 15 more miles than I am. <laughs> and I, I go to U of H uh, four times a week because I teach there. So. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you, you're always welcome to join us by Zoom. You know? Uh, I know. And I just uh, either forget or I'm busy or it's, it's been, you know, getting into the habit of, of doing it. So this is one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad yet. you. It's not yeah. a habit yet, but I'm closer than I was to a habit. <laughs> and I'm glad you said something about renewing membership uh, last year because uh, I have to renew mine. <laughs> Bob, I have to renew mine. <laughs> uh, you know, Joe, what they're doing is automatically renewing you. Uh, instead of sending out reminders, they just automatically renew you and charge your, your credit card. 
Uh, oh. I found that out by surprise. And they've done that for a couple of years now. Well, maybe I should change that setting or something. I don't know. Because they keep reminding me. And every time I log into Saber, it's like, renew your membership. <laughs> well, that's my standard, you know, deal. <laughs> Bob Stevens. Yeah, hi, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing terrific. How about you? Just doing great. I'm sorry we missed our vintage baseball game this year. Yeah. We all did. They didn't play. Yeah, I was wondering what happened. I don't know. We lost interest. A... Wes, how you doing? Doing great, as I think we all are. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Yep. Nice run. Um, you, uh, I see you uh, got the World Series champion hat on. Actually, this is the 2017 hat, but. Uh, uh, oh, wow. Okay. Good enough. It'll work <laughs> for me for a while. Yeah. I guess I could wear mine. I mean, it's fair. Sure. I don't, I don't know if. Uh, Bob, maybe you can answer this. Uh, here's the here's the gold one from 2017. Are, are they going to. Are they going to and uh, are they going to come up with a gold one for next year for for this one? Are the Astros are they still doing that? Yeah, typically, the team that wins the World Series gets to wear a gold uniform. Uh, they're the yeah. only team that can do it for the year. The Braves did it last year, right, Gary? And uh, 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 Craig, I'm sorry, I kind of a little nearsighted. And I assume that they'll do something, if nothing else, but to raise some more dollars. I mean, poor Jim. Need some more bucks, so <laughs> especially he's going to hire a new GM, or maybe he's not. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's my 2022 one. So I guess I can. Oh, ah, very nice. Here. Oh, that's, 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 that's <laughs> Yep. I um. I kind of went a little nuts uh, last Saturday night when they won. Uh, I was. Uh, it was. It was the first time I was surrounded with my family when they won because in 2017. I was working at my part-time job that night in Domino's mm. uh, when they won. Uh, but this is the first time my dad was there. My wife was there. I was, I was in Seattle with my uncle, my aunt, my cousins. We were all sitting around watching the game. Of course, they're, they're Royals fans. They're from Kansas City. Um, but they were all up in Seattle for uh, my uncle and aunt's 40th wedding anniversary. And uh, my dad and my wife and I'd seen my son earlier that day. So this, it was kind of special because my family was around me. So that had never yeah. happened before. So that was great. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I kind of went a little nuts and uh, started asking everybody what kind of shirt they wanted. Yeah. So uh, I kind of had to step it back a little bit, you know. Hey, I'm spending all my Christmas budget already. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, well, there is, oh, here's somebody else. There's seven of us. Um, who's this, Scott? Let me see him, come on. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Muted right now. Scott, you're on mute. I was trying to get off mute. Let me let my dog out of the window. Hi guys. Hey, there, Scott. Just flew in late last night, so I'm a little groggy. Oh, that's understandable. Um, well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the official. Uh, I don't know after celebration <laughs> party after after celebration World Series party. Um. Uh, we have uh, Craig here. Who, uh, Craig? I've never met you, right? You haven't met. Okay. And uh, so you don't really know anybody on the line here. I don't. Okay. Um, Karen, I guess you. Karen, are you there? Kind of been in the same spot for a while, same position. But I thought maybe we could. Uh, I'm going to tell everybody, remind everybody uh, who our guest is next Monday. If you don't know, um, if you would like to come down, I, I highly advise this would be a perfect opportunity for you to come to the meeting in person because Terry Poole will be our guest. 
the great Astros legend, Terry Poole. Uh, I've already said that, I already told uh, people at the last chapter meeting, I'm going to bring a bucket of balls, but I've decided maybe just, you know, two or three. <laughs> and uh, I did not know this, but did y'all know Terry Poole wrote a book? You know, heard of this? It's only like nine or 10 pages long. I don't know if it's just a little pamphlet. It's about hitting. <laughs> I found it. It's called Baseball Swing with Terry Poole. It's got his name on it. I mean, it's, you know, like 10 or 11 pages long. I found it on Amazon. So I was going to have him sign that. <laughs> but I, I didn't know he wrote a book. <laughs> so I don't know. I bet, did y'all... Has he written a book besides this? Do y'all know, or y'all y'all know a lot about Terry Poole? I know Bob, you probably do, and Wes. Yeah, not not aware of any book. Um, <laughs> look around here. Were you kind of surprised by that, Bob? Absolutely, I had no idea um, that he written a book. I I knew he was a financial guy right now, and his after baseball life, and he's also been a college coach until recently, a uh, baseball yeah. coach. Um, we have invited him a couple of times to speak, but he's always had conflicts in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill Brennan was instrumental in getting him to uh, come next uh, mon Monday week. And uh, should be a very good meeting. Should be well attended too, from what I can gather. I've had several people contact me, said, hey, we're gonna be there. So- uh, Yeah, it'll be great. Um, sure, it's a Monday before Thanksgiving, but uh, I mean, Craig, if you can't make it down there, you can certainly join by Zoom or- something or watch the replay or something like that but uh to be the chance to talk with terry pool uh, i'm sure he'll uh he'll talk with us for a while answer some questions uh, i have quite a few questions um but I, I couldn't help while the uh world series was going on to um think about the last time the astros played the phillies in the playoffs oh. and uh <laughs> a little bit different uh a little bit different outcome this time so i mean maybe we can talk about that a little bit too so those of you who probably remember uh, are there any little com comparisons from this time the last time that you want to talk oh, about uh, i mean game one was game one was just game six of the the 1980 series it, it, it felt like extra innings phillies beat us uh it, yeah <laughs> a lot of comparisons did it, I was nine years old when that happened. So, I mean, <laughs> so I don't, I don't remember that much. Um, but it, it, did we have the lead in game one of 80? And they just we came had back? The lead. We were up by three in the eighth inning with Nolan Ryan on the mound and Joe Sambito in the bullpen. And we <laughs> lost. We lost. And it, it was... Uh, uh, I, I shed some tears that night. It was, and I, I wasn't nine years old. I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't want to ask how old you are, Craig, or I mean, do you remember the 80 series? Well, it was a long time ago, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was a freshman in college. Oh, okay. Were you an Astros fan uh, yeah. back then or did you? I was, yeah, well, I was, yeah, I was an Astro fan lifelong, so. Oh, okay. I was born and, born and raised here, so I've, I've gone to Astro games since uh, the 60s, the late 60s. Wow. Wow. So, um, yeah. I, I, I didn't really know what to think after game one. Like, mm. is this mach Philly's machine too powerful? Is this the Braves all over again? Or, I mean, uh, or the Nationals or whatever. Because um, I – I, and as the series went on, and maybe we can talk about this uh, at the meeting too, but I, as the series went on, I just kind of felt like um, after game three is like, is, is this the Nationals or is this the Braves from last year? But the more I started to think about it, I mean, last year, I, to me, last year's team was more, um, It's it, it was almost unbelievable they got to the World Series with we didn't have any pitching, really, did we? <laughs> Am I wrong in thinking we didn't have any pitching last year once we got to the World Series? I mean, am I wrong to think that? <laughs> no, Carlos was gone. Yeah, we, we didn't have much. I mean, you know, with what Boston did to us in the ALCS, it's just like, wow, I, I couldn't believe it. And then when 
but this year's team, I mean, especially after the no hitter, I was like, I think we just kind of took the win out of the sails of the Phillies. <laughs> we took the crowd out. <laughs> so, uh, which was a big I may thing. be wrong on this, but, uh, and you guys can straighten me out because I, I wasn't here in 1980, but Deacon Jones, who was with the Astros at that point, was in the dugout. I think he was a, the batting coach. And he was saying that he still doesn't know if the correct call was made. There's a, uh, the Phillies had men on first and second, and a line drive came back to Vern Rule. And Vern either caught it or trapped it. But no umpire knew exactly what had happened. Now, there was a long debate about, in fact, even went to Warren Giles, who I believe was the president of the National League at the time, to ask him. And uh, the decision was, he didn't, nobody knew, so they made what they called was the best decision at the time, and they called it a double play instead of a triple play, because if he'd caught the ball, he could have got caught the runners off first and second. Does anybody remember that? I don't. It happening. You know the details better than I do at this point, so I, I can't add anything to that. It was very controversial, and it was seemed like they didn't quite make the right call. That's what Deacon says to this day. Yeah. I, I can understand why he says that. Um, of course, Vern Rule's not with us, and uh, um, Tal doesn't know, doesn't remember exactly. They, they, they made a compromised call, but it either had to be a triple play or something else, but double play didn't quite work. But that's they said it's eh, it's kind of a compromise. Let's call it a double play. Right, exactly, exactly, Wes. That's what I understand. Yeah. And that had been a triple play. They probably would have won the game and gone on. But uh, and that I don't remember knows? the specifics as to how critical that was. But if Deacon says it was, it probably was. I'm gonna have to look at that. Yeah. I don't know what what game was that, Bob? They won. It was one of the latter games, either uh, game six. I'm guessing so game six. Five, five games. Was I? It was the game five was? Well, I, I don't know if it was game five. I know there were only five games. Um, so I, I don't know which game it was. Okay. We can ask De I'll ask Deacon. Who's game four? Talk. Game four? four? Okay. okay. Well. Wow. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just, uh, I'm going to have to go back and watch some of it. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere or something like that. So, uh, um, it was I'm, a I'm have to... I just, it, I think the last four games were all extra innings. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was about as exciting a series as you could have. We just came out on the wrong side of it. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Um, but Joe Morgan was injured, right? The whole series might have been. I don't even remember that, but that that may be. I I, I thought I heard somewhere that he was uh, kind of like Altuve in eighteen. He was kind of running around on one leg. Maybe. So, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, did any of y'all uh, go to the parade? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was down there. Did you get any pictures? Uh, Rick Aaron, well, who's that? That's Scott. That's okay. Scott. Yeah, sorry, I can't. Uh, find, I can't get my camera to work. Sorry, you guys always oh, see me anyway. It's okay, Scott. It's all right. Um, actually, no. Uh, I mean, it, it, by the time I got there, it was fifty people back. It sure yeah. felt like that, and it was just wild. I mean, um, and I couldn't really stand on anything because everybody was already standing on everything. <laughs> You know, I was going to say, I, I went in 17, but not this past year. And I had brought a little step ladder and uh, I just carried that around just a short one, but it was enough to get you over uh, about 10 rows, 15 rows of people. Yeah. Um, another thing is I parked at Minute Maid and I walked all the way over. A lot of us were walked all the way over to Smith street. That's like a mile walk or something. <laughs> it, was, it was, of course I, I wasn't the only one. I mean, there were lots of people out there. It's like, it was estimated, what, 2 million people or something like that? I don't know how many people were in 17, but was this bigger? 
you know? Now the press said it was much bigger. The press said this one was much bigger than 17? Right. Hmm, okay. I sure felt that way. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Um, so Bob and I was talking a little bit uh, with everything that's that's gone on since since we won the World Series. Um, we could talk about that a little bit. I mean, who do you think the next GM is going to be? Or um, is uh, Jim Crane going to be the Jerry Jones GM type? Um, do you have any ideas of who the who you think the next GM of the Astros will be? Do you think we'll have one? <laughs> I, I think there's several great minds on this video that, that should throw their hat into the ring for uh, G for the Astros. Who's that? I think there are seven <laughs> great minds right here that probably would be a good small sample that to submit for Astros G. Well, I mean, you know, it'd be a great opportunity, you know. Yeah. So you, know, you have a little extra time between uh, one and four a.m., don't you, that you could participate? <laughs> We do have. We do. <laughs> I kind of like my job at U of H, so I don't know. That was the hardest working guy I know. Yeah, I, I feel like that one's more stable. <laughs> 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 With, and I, but I heard that all the guys on the radio, uh, uh, six ten or seven ninety, talking about, uh, you know, uh, it's a. They're not sure if it's a great opportunity to come into because you don't really have a lot of control and you're probably not going to be able to put your stamp on the team. But the situation you're coming into for, for any young guy or young person that wants to be a, make a name for themselves, this might be a perfect opportunity, you know, to use as sort of the stepping stone to your next position or something. I don't know. That kind of makes sense to me. I mean, because who's to say the Astros won't come back next year? I mean, Verlander is probably – gone but uh i don't know i i think this team has a really good chance to go to three in a row i don't know so any gm would as far as i'm concerned i i think especially young gm why, why wouldn't they want to take a chance even if it's just for one or two years i don't know what y'all think i don't know i think that's a good perspective i, I think like you say a, a veteran gm maybe not because what are they going to get out of it other than maybe a ring uh but but somebody who wants to make a name for himself would be a great opportunity I don't know. I think it depends on how much you think Crane is going to interfere. Honestly. And, and I think we think a lot. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm worried about. Temporary GM. Crane's going to have his fingerprints all over it. Mm -hmm. I think if he was that we fired Reed Ryan. You know, that was an indication that uh, he didn't like the uh, co-attention. That In fact, Reed Ryan was getting too much attention as far as Crane was concerned. Uh, that's my opinion. I know Reed a little bit. And uh, that was part of the issue. Crane said he wanted to bring in his son for that job, and the son lasted about six months and left. Mm. I did not know that. Well, I was going to ask about that. that. I heard about his son maybe wanting to do that, but you say he already had a chance at it and uh, left? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hmm. Wow. I don't know. Well, these owner meddling owners situations usually don't end very well as the cowboy fans will attest among you um steinbrenner is probably the only one that was able to overcome that just with the sheer volume of money that he had available to him but um for the most part that doesn't sound well for us no long term i don't you know it, it depends i think it's more it's more important to get the free agency right and get the than it is to get the GM right. I think there are plenty of good candidates for GM. Yeah, I, I would think so. I, I just hope we don't run into a Bill O'Brien situation. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and then the Astros become, I mean, I don't want to jinx nothing, but please, I hope nothing like that happens. <laughs> and I think well, the, 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 his, the history of Houston sports overall is not great. So uh, yeah. we do have that going against us. And if we did get a semi-incompetent GM like Bill O'Brien, who was a totally incompetent GM, I, I think Crane would not give him the, the room to make a lot of mistakes. Um, yeah. Next year is just going to be an interim year. 
not a lot of big dramatic things because Crane won't let it be a mistake. Uh, yeah, the impression I get is that Crane was targeting Stearns from Milwaukee and his vision was that Stearns would come right in after the World Series and, and be our GM. Mm -hmm. And then Stearns got locked up for another year. That's when all this kind of uncertainty came out. And I don't know that Crane has a good plan for it. Uh, he couldn't get Click to stick around for that one more year until Stearns is available. And so now we got to make do. I don't know. Well, Bob, you also, uh, Bob, you told me that he, he, uh, he let go the assistant too, right? The assistant. Right here, I read it. And also two other executives left earlier in the week to go to other teams. So he's lost four executives out of the uh, operation staff, which again they tells you another story. Oh, they, they weren't necessarily let go. They just went for other opportunities. Is that yeah, two of them went for other opportunities and one was fired. Okay. Yeah, one is now the GM in San Francisco, and the other is an assistant GM in Miami. Yeah, so just diff, just moving around, nothing. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think the talent alone would probably draw at least a couple of good names. If Crane wants to hire somebody, I I don't know, or maybe he wants to play GM by himself. Him and Dusty kind of run the show themselves next year and wait for Stearns. I don't know, but if you put all your eggs in one basket, I mean, if it doesn't work out, what are you what are you going to do? I mean, you know, uh, is there somebody like him out there, or is he just the hot commodity, and then everyone else? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if there's anybody else out there. I mean, I mean it's my personal really opinion that he really didn't want Dusty to come back, but Dusty put him in a position where he had to come back. He's now a legend. I mean, he's, you know, everybody loves Dusty. And that's why I gave him another year. That's my personal opinion. Because he and uh, there were some conflicts, you know, uh, uh, on that trade for the, with the Cub catcher and that kind of stuff that uh, that took place. Um, but the, the public would not tolerate Dusty not coming back. The fans, I don't think, would tolerate that. It affects season ticket sales. Yeah. So, Bob, uh, maybe y'all can answer, uh, too. So, um, the way I heard it, uh, Dusty and Crane wanted Contreras and Click didn't want Contreras. Is that right? I thought it was the other way around. I thought, way around. I thought so too. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know where Dusty was. But... Dusty was the one that vetoed the trade. Dusty was? Yeah. Vetoed the Contreras. Okay. I think so. Um, I don't know about Dusty. I know that uh, that Crane never signed off. Thank God. So, Craig, you're not a Contreras fan? I'm a Contreras it. fan, but I thought that was too much to give up for him for two months when we had what we had. And it turned out, you know, Christian Vasquez is available for much, much less. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying – I mean, I, I think Contreras is going to sign for a lot of money and more money than I would – pay for him at his point in his career but you know that's just me so you think we're going to roll Aldonado again next year Vasquez, isn't he a free agent too I, 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 I don't think he I is I think he signed I think he's already Does signed he resign? yeah, he signed a two year contract uh, last year well this you have is... Maldonado you have Corey Lee and let's hope he does better and, uh, and if not there's always good defensive catchers out there but if, um, you know, someone's got a bat ninth. Yeah, someone does. Yeah. Um, so a new GM, or in, do you think we should just not change anything? I mean, we're going to need a first baseman, ain't we? I mean, if, unless you think Yuli's not coming back? or I mean, are we fine at center field or what? You know, I, I don't think we are. If you don't bring back Verlander, and we can talk about that in a minute, you know, that, that question, but you've got a lot of money. You can throw in a couple position players and, and establish a just, like you say, get a good first baseman. Um, maybe you can upgrade center field. But I, I, I haven't done the numbers, but I would think you've got a lot of money to throw a position. They do have a lot of players going through arbitration, and um, I hope they're considering doing a, you know, 
buyout, I mean, a long-term deal for, for Tucker, I'd like to see him get under contract. Yeah. I think he's, he's proven himself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little less hot on um, upgraded center field than I was maybe two months ago. I think Chaz McCormick just may be good enough to, to do well in that position. Isn't Jose Abreu a free agent? And would he be a fit if the Astros moved the money that they were paying Verlander to first base? Well, that's a, that's a good question, Craig, because I was going to say, if we have all this is. extra money, I mean, there's there's Rizzo, Josh Bell, and, and Abreu, right? They yeah, but what Josh Bell did in San Diego scares me. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had like a pit, he had like a pitcher for two months. Wow. Okay. But and, are three uh, of those guys better than Yuli? Oh, uh, Abreu is for sure. I think. And Yuli's what 36, 37? 39. And had a down year. Abreu is that now? Abreu may just be cost prohibitive. I don't know what kind of deal he's going to get. I'm not really sure. Um, and Rizzo, how old is Rizzo? I oh, don't know. The deal is, 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 is it a one-year plug-in or is it a, a long-term deal that you have to do? And, man, I get nervous about these guys. That, that, that's the hangover effect from Carlos Lee. <laughs> yeah. From <laughs> the start, yeah. yeah. I mean, Rizzo hit 224 and hit a lot of home runs in Yankee Stadium. Rizzo's 33. 30. He's 33. Yeah. I mean, so. Hey, Brayu I... is, he's even older. So he's going to be 36 here before the season starts. So, and he hit 304 with just 15 home runs. I, you know, you, I don't know. I, you got to do something. I was thinking they would actually keep Mancini. And let him play first. Means, and means he still, they still could. They still, yeah. they, still could. they still could. But did Houston decline that option? It was a mutual option, or did Mancini decline it? Who Houston declined? declined it. Houston, Houston declined, declined it. it. Yeah. So I thought it was a pretty good deal for Houston. Ten million. Yeah, he, he he flat out just disappeared. I mean, uh, uh, I after, mean, after about two weeks after he got here, I mean, I'm what not going to judge do? him on. I'm not going to judge him on two weeks. Um, okay. I mean, ten million is just not a ton of money for a guy that. I don't know. There may be more going on there. I don't know. If you want to truly upgrade the position, then you pass on him and, and go for something more. If right. That's a, yeah. And like you say, you get nervous about some long-term contracts, like for Rizzo. So I, I don't see the answer, but maybe it's out there. Well, and another thing is, uh, Crane has proven over and over again that he's not going to give anybody no really long-term contracts so these big name players they have to be willing to take it i don't know what is the most that crane's willing to do six years is that what he did with you on six years sounds right you're not going to go six years on a guy that's 33 or 36 so i mean mm -hmm. so i don't i don't know how long crane is willing to go with some of these older players if it's a real upgrade at first base five five years and i don't know if they'll these older players will take that yeah. i don't I mean, yeah, I mean, if I could get Jose Abreu, I mean, I'm not opposed to re-signing Yuli either. I don't know what he would bring, but um, I'm not opposed to that. I don't think he was that bad. And he's hitting down in the lineup, and he still hits home runs, but. He's also a phenomenal first baseman. Phenomenal yeah, first baseman. True. He saved he a is. lot of errors. That's true. He did. I'm not a, yeah. I mean, they need to do something. If they're not going to bring Mancini back, they need to sign Yuli or sign one of these other two guys we've been talking about. Yeah. Because you can't put Alidmus Diaz there and win. I don't think he can play no, the position. He's gone. He can he's play gone. the position, but yeah. And uh, I also heard the either uh, I think the radio guys uh, were talking about that um, maybe it was Steve Sparks that uh, eventually uh, Yuli is uh, so respected in the clubhouse that they could see him potentially transitioning into a coaching role or something like that. So. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, I don't know if the Astros would be willing to sign him for a couple more years and then transition him. I don't, I don't know if he'd even want that, but I don't know. So, I mean, it would be something. What are you going to do about our shortstop? Are we going to try to lock him up? 
early as some other teams have done with with young players? I well, you know, there is that sophomore jinx out there. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think next year is kind of a transition year, though, for everybody, isn't it? Because the shift is gone, right? You know, the shift is gone. So, personally, I think they should do whatever they can to sign Michael Brantley again. Um, and then we'll see what happens now that the shift is gone and see if there's an offensive explosion next year. <laughs> I don't know. Does that affect the decision on Brantley? Or not Brantley, on Pena? Well, I mean, it, it could just be lightning in a bottle for that rookie year. I mean, people will adjust to him because, you remember, people adjusted – I, I would say people kind of adjusted to Jordan and then Jordan kind of adjusted back. So if people continuously adjust to Pena. I mean, Pena does have that hole in his swing, right? Those sliders down and away. Uh, he has that bad hole in the swing um, because even during the world series, you saw these guys with these really good breaking balls. He just swung and missed, swung and missed, swung and missed. And then people he would make mistakes. Too. Huh? He hit 400, too. Yeah, people would make mistakes, and, you know, he, he would crush it. But they were talking about Pena's hole in his swing all year. You know, so um, I don't know. I, I here's, here's why I'd at least have those conversations. At least you're getting a plus defensive shortstop. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm not really sure that he's going to fall back that much, even if he does – do a little I hope he's not. still going to be a quality shortstop the question is and you look at the julio julio rodriguez deal that deal is so backloaded with player options it's a it's a win-win for the player and a lose-lose for the organization so uh -huh. how you structure the deal goes a long way as to how, how it looks i i think the seven years guaranteed is uh or the seven years for the team that's guaranteed is pretty good numbers for for him i think he's a really good center fielder and and uh, probably good for the club deal but the back end is definitely and you know when you're start when you're projecting eight nine years out 30 31 32 for a player like julio rodriguez i mean it's a real gamble and to put all of the all of the benefit in the players option side is kind of tough but Guaranteeing him through his arbitration years and maybe a free agency year, maybe to age 28, 29, that gives him a chance at a big contract then. Would Pena do it for the for the guaranteed, you know, generational wealth? I would say he probably would think about it. Mm -hmm. And would the Astros do it to lock up a, a big piece of the puzzle? They should. They should. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that, Craig. I mean, it, it would make sense, but uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to worry about the sophomore slump, but hopefully he doesn't. <laughs> hopefully he doesn't go through that. <laughs> yeah, well, Pena uh, got a gold glove, so uh, any offense, it's just a bonus, really. Right. He did so much better than anybody expected this year. So uh, if he does go into a little bit of a slump, he's still a great defensive shortstop, even with the shift. So Bob, do you think he was uh, better than Correa at the same point of his career? Yeah. It looks like he, he really came through in the postseason. So, yeah, he's really clutch, just like Correa was, too. So I, it's a great comparison. Yeah. Bill, did you see that picture that uh, uh, Bob uh, McCann sent you this morning? Oh, yeah, the George oh, Springer. Carl Correa and George Springer watching the World Series on TV. Moment, moment, moment that out. That's how yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It was, I, I've hey, seen that picture. They're both staring at the TV. He says, that looks like fun or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. Um yeah, I, I just hope uh, I just hope we don't have any more of those pitchers roaming around after next year with Verlander joining Springer and Correa <laughs> sitting on a couch <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, and speaking of Verlander, so is he going to come back or is he going to go to New York, L.A.? I mean, what do you think he's going to do? 
listen to Kate Upton and go to New York and LA or Chicago or something? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping we don't bring him back. That I just can't see the wisdom of spending a lot of money on a Verlander when you've got such a great core pitching stick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you think it's going to take to uh, sign him up? Well, he declined 25, right? So we know it's materially in excess, I would think, of 25, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and I, I think he's worth more to somebody else than he is to us. Do you have any idea who he might sign with? I have no idea. I have no idea. Most money. He's got, money. he's got he's got he's got his rings yes he's got two i mean he's obviously a if not a first ballot then definitely a second ballot hall of famer i mean he he really doesn't have anything else to prove to anybody um you don't think he'd go back to detroit do you maybe they won't pay him the money. i think there's a chance of that there's a chance of that scott you think i think so yeah I think he liked it up there. I think uh, he liked Hinch and uh, sees an up and coming team that uh, he can reestablish a relationship with if they pay him enough money. They pay him enough, yeah. Hmm. I, I Maybe. think his biggest goal is to follow the Nolan Ryan trajectory and, and have just a, a long career and, and keep piling up strikeouts and wins. Um, I think he'd like to go till he's 45 if his body will let him do it. Uh, now, what what that means in terms of the best team to go to, I don't know. Well, if he follows that Nolan uh, project, uh, you know, uh, trajectory, uh, hopefully he won't sign with the Rangers, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so that would be interesting. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm curious to see uh, where he decides to go. Um, if maybe he has a, uh, maybe Kate has something to do with this and she wants to go to LA or something or New York. I, I don't know. Yeah. But Bobby you shaking your head. No, no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was talking about her horses. So maybe she should stay in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it, may, it may take 30, 35 million to sign to, to sign Verlander, but. We'll and Crane see. seemed to sincerely say that he wanted to get Verlander back and they were working on trying to get him back, which I don't get that, but it sounds like Crane wants to get him back. They're really good friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Crane's going to make him an offer. So here's what this is the best I can do. Thirty million dollars, or whatever the number is, and yeah. he says, you know, and with an option for a second year, but that's all I can do, take it or leave it. That's my opinion. You know, I, I heard Matt Thomas on the radio yesterday talking about this whole idea that players will go to New York and L.A. no matter what, just because of the market, because they had a caller call up and say, why would uh, Verlander? Uh, why would Verlander not want to sign here or as opposed to maybe go to New York or something uh, when the taxes are so much higher? And Matt Thomas said, well, that's not really a big deal to these people. Uh, it, it's just they want to go wherever they can go uh, just for the name recognition. And I don't know. I don't know what y'all think about that. It, it would seem to me it would cost a lot more money um, playing in New York or L.A., like the Yankees would have to offer him some kind of 40, 45 million to be the equivalent of pay of, of what he would make here in Houston for 35 million. I, I don't know. Maybe y'all probably are better with numbers and taxes than I am. So what would be that equivalent of going to New York and LA or in Chicago? Uh, what would a player have to make up there? That would be the equivalent of what he can make here. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe y'all can talk about that. Talk about that. Well, the thing is, all of the players have um, pay pay taxes where they play the games, right. not where they're based on. So, eighty, you're only talking about half the season anyway. That, mm -hmm. that you and and so for an Astro player, half the season 
is played n- normally on a where they have to pay taxes. So, yes, yes. so um, it's not all of that money, and, and you know, I think it's probably I, not something they take into a lot of account when you I mean, look I at the other other factors. Yeah, I, I understand that, but still, I mean, if you're paying playing 80 games at Yankee Stadium, you know, as opposed to 80 games at Minute Maid, I mean, it, I mean, that's something, ain't it? <laughs> it is something. It is something. <laughs> Besides the crowd throwing beer bottles and stuff like that, it's just, you know. uh, One of my good friends who you guys, well, uh, Joe knows and Bob knows for sure, uh, who's associated with the the Yankees, says they don't have that much money. If they, you know, give a contract to judge, that's it. If they don't give a contract to judge, then they may go after Verlander, but they can't have them both. Yeah, that's that's another that's, yeah, that's a, that's another topic of conversation. Where does Judge go? I'm sure I, I read uh, yesterday that, that that's the biggest domino waiting to fall. <laughs> then every everything else follows uh, Judge. It was kind of like pool holes a long time ago. But once that big name is gone, then every, everybody else just follows. I, I don't know where he's going to go. People are saying he's going to be a judge. I don't know. Scott, what do you think? Do you have an opinion about that? Or do you think judge about what? Is gonna go? where Judge is going to go? I think he's stay with the Yankees. Thank you. Pay him whatever he wants. Oh, yeah. Pay whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what do you think he wants? $50 million? <laughs> <laughs> On average? Uh, I don't know. I think, well, it's hard to say. I mean, he's going to go for as much as he can get and see if the Yankees will pay it. But I think they're going to – uh, want to keep him there, and they're afraid if they lose him, um, the fans will have an uprising against him. Yeah, I mean, who's the highest paid player in baseball now? Max, Max uh, Scherzer for the year. Max Scherzer, and how much? How much? Forty-three. 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 You think Judge will be the first fifty? Yeah, no, fifty. Forty-five might be something he'll, I and mean, then they raise it up to fifty later on. Uh, I don't know. Personally, I think these salaries are getting just way too outrageous. Um, but that's just my personal feeling. Yeah, I'm right there with you. But the, the NBA is kind of getting the same way too. Uh, I thought I saw some yeah. some somewhere. I forget what the player is who makes sixty or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't, yeah, they are getting a little wild. I don't know. There has to be a ceiling at some point. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> as long as media revenue keeps going up and we keep buying tickets. Yeah, and- we have to stop buying tickets at these ridiculous prices is what needs to happen. But <laughs> I, just, I don't see that happening either. I, I don't go to games as often as I used to. Yeah. Well, so uh, Scott thinks that Judge is going to stay with the Yankees. Anybody else? I mean, I, I keep seeing Judge in Giants uniforms online, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he'll go to the Giants? Anybody? Or anywhere else? I heard that name come up a lot, the Giants. The Yankees, you say that the Yankees are going to pitch legend. Judge, you want to stay here and be a legend like Joe D and Babe Ruth and all that. If you leave here, yeah. you won't be a legend. It'll tarnish your image. Pretty strong stuff. Who said that, Bob? Uh, one of the executives for the, uh, yeah. the Yankees who uh, told, told told our friend personally that's what the, their appeal is going to be, beside money. Well, if, if he doesn't stay with the Yankees, you think he's going to go across town? The Mets? I doubt it. Doubt it? Okay. Yeah, they're not going to let him go to the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. The Yankees are bust, huh? Yeah, I can <laughs> see that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, a Judge becomes the highest paid player in baseball, especially after what he did this year. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't be shocked if he leaves, uh, but I kind of would be shocked if he leaves. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How well did Judge do against the Yankees and the Mets this year? When they, when we played them, 
I guess, nine games. How many home runs did he hit against our teams? How many times did Not he many. strike out during our against our teams against good pitching? Think about it. A lot. Yeah. Did he have? He had a. Did he have one home run against us, or two? One. 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 And that was that game they came back and won, right? I know he had the walk off single, right? Yeah, I think he also had a walk off homer. Oh, he had a walk off homer too against us yeah. in the regular season. I think it was a yeah, single and a homer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes he you think. He hit home runs off the you know the three, four, and five from the clubs, but can he hit home runs against one and two uh, on a consistent basis? And uh, I was disappointed. I am sure the pressure for going for sixty-two got to him a little bit. I mean, I, I can understand that. That's enormous, but uh, yes, he didn't do that well. I thought uh, during the key games. At the end of the year. Well, I mean, the Yankees may not hold that against them. You know, it's just, here's your 45, 50 million, stay Yankee. Uh, uh, be interesting. When, when do you think he's going to sign, Scott? Or do you have any idea? When do you think that might happen? I don't think there's any rush. Okay. So we may go uh, go into January and February, and once he signs, then everything else happens. Do you think that'll happen? <laughs> Everybody else follows along, the Correas and everyone else? Everybody's waiting for Judge to sign? Or are people going to get tired of uh, waiting for Judge and then they'll just sign somewhere else? Or is everybody just no. sitting back waiting for what Judge to do? For what judge to do? Everybody has an idea, I'm sure, what Judge is going to bring, and the teams that are would consider paying that for him are probably going to keep their powder dry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the teams that don't think they'll be in that race will go ahead and sign other players. Yeah, yeah I don't think everyone's going to wait for Judge to sign. I agree with that statement. It was just stayed. So, um, well, waiting for Judge to sign, is that affecting where you think Rizzo goes? No? So even if they pay just no, I think million. no. I mean, I think that the teams that want to make a run at Judge are going to do it fairly quickly because that's a lot of money. I don't think it's. I don't know. The thing about for Judge, the issue is going to be the the length of the contract more so than the annual salary. So Scherzer gets forty three million because it's a very short contract. So, you know, that's kind of the where the where where Verlander is. He can get a lot of money for one year if he just takes a one year deal, but if he wants a three year deal, teams take on more risk. I put some things in chat, by the way. I don't know if y'all have the chat button, but. Yeah, good, yeah. good info about judges' performance. Yeah. Back about Correa, too. But um, sometimes that's overlooked. But I think I think the judge thing will happen fairly quickly, maybe by, maybe by the winter meetings. Because there's so much money involved. You're either in or you're out. And if judge waits around, teams are going to, you know, not want to take the risk of not getting a player that they need to sign someone else. So he's going to have to move quickly to get the best deal. That's the way I think it's going to happen. So the GM meetings were in Las Vegas last week and the winter meetings are. Usually in early, early December. Yeah. Okay. Are the so GM meetings. Correa? Yeah. Well, how about Correa? Yeah. Is he yeah how about Correa? Maybe? I don't know, Bob. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, he may want to stay in Minnesota to see what that new logo is going to look like. Uh, I don't know. They, they saw yesterday that the Twins are going to have a new logo. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Um, I, I I always had a theory that maybe Correa would want to go to Miami, but I doubt that would ever happen. So uh, maybe New York, L.A., San Diego, Boston. I don't know. San Diego won't sign him. They've already got Tatis. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got Tatis. Assuming he ever or gets do they? <laughs> or do they? <laughs> That's right. Or do they? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Padres may not want Tatis anymore. <laughs> well, too bad for that. I know. That big. Well, At least for now. They've got a. That's a lot of money they've committed to him. 
but he may not be their shortstop. I think they've got a much better defensive shortstop. I forget who it is, but I, I've heard that it's, there's a good possibility they'll just move him to the outfield. Yeah, they did okay with that position. I, th uh, I think Atlanta, if they don't sign uh, Dansby Swanson, would be interested in Correa. Um, and maybe San Francisco. Brandon, how old is Brandon Crawford, and what's his contract status? Crawford's pretty old, ain't he? He's in his thirties. Um, He's in his mid thirties. I'm gonna say he's around 35, 36. You know, I, I used to know all of this because I used to play fantasy baseball every year. And I talked to Bob McCann. I talked to Bob McCann uh, the last couple of meetings and uh, I think I'm gonna join uh, his fantasy baseball league for next season. So uh, I'll probably have a lot more information starting next season because I'm gonna get back into it. <laughs> Philadelphia is another team that might be interested because they declined the option on Segura. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Stott, what's his name? Branson Stott? Branson Bryson Stott. Stott. Bryson Stott is, you know. Bryson Scott, right? S -S Stott, S-T-O-T-T. -T. Stott. So, Phil so Philadelphia, Atlanta, and San Francisco are three that Carlos Correa may, I think, land at. I'm just kind of perusing some notes. Do you think the Phillies are going to be back next year? Or do you think they got exposed in the World Series? They've cleared a lot of salary room. No, they're going to be back strong. They're going to be back strong. They've cleared, F, you know, declining some options. I've, I've got eight. They're $83 million to spend between where they are right now and commitments to what they spent last year in, in payroll. And I don't, I don't think they're going to cut their payroll. I think they're going to get some players. And Korea could be one and, you know. Verlander, they need pitching for sure. Yeah, they do need that. Um, Does Kate want to live in Philly? I don't know that. You know, <laughs> I don't know. She may get it's not, that, it's not that far from New York, you know. So it's going to be uh, very interesting uh, the next month and a half, I think, as to where everybody goes and what happens with the Astros. Um, I'm real curious to see how this GM situation with the Astros kind of plays out and then, uh, who we bring back. Um, if y'all don't know, maybe you do, maybe you don't, the Astros, uh, uh, signed Montero to a three-year deal and they're talking about making a brand new, uh, starting pitcher again. Um, wasn't he a starting pitcher before or has he always been out of the bullpen? I thought I remembered he was. They were kind of grooming him to be a starting pitcher. What he may have been at what, one point, but where's the room in the rotation? You've got oh. Framber and Javier and McCullers is under contract for a long time. And Luis Garcia is a fine number four pitcher, and Jose Urquidy's a fine number five pitcher. And I kind of like Hunter Brown in that Christian Javier swing yeah. uh, spot where he, you know, multiple inning relief pitcher or starter. And Abreu was so good in the seventh, eighth, eighth inning this year. I don't know why they would do that. I don't know who, what, who they're planning on moving or, or what, whatever. But I think the rotation, with even without Verlander, is set. Yeah. Six deep. Yeah, it is. Um, hey, let's talk about McCullers. You think he was Thank you, pitches? Bob. <laughs> thank you, Bob. You were transitioning to what I was <laughs> going to talk about. Was he tipping his pitches? <laughs> what happened? Did the Phillies find something out that McCullers needs to fix quick? <laughs> not what quick happened? he has several months he has well, several what months. happened in game three what, what happened there especially his leg kick was different his what his leg kick was different and the so Phillies spotted it so it was a mechanics thing yeah right so he could he could correct it but it's going to be interesting to see how he does I think he's been too good for too long to worry about one outing. Uh, I, I, he'll correct whatever it was. He's 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 okay. Yeah, but it was uh, it was a historically bad outing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just with five home runs, right? Right. I mean, he only had six hits. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, 
in between that out, I mean, in between that outing from McCullers and Verlander kind of letting the Phillies back in the game, I mean, this could have been a very quick World Series, but um, I, I, I was really worried about McCullers when they took him out. I mean, I mean, I just hope he can fix game. this. You know, one game he had he he looked really good all year in his eight starts going into the playoffs. I mean, he needs to stay healthy. That that's for sure. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over this one game. Didn't his dad have that problem I mean, when he was playing? Phil, Philadelphia is trying hard too. So you know, sometimes you just don't have it. Yeah. Hey, I, I was going to ask. I don't know if y'all remember Lance McCullers, uh, mm -hmm. senior. But I mean, didn't he have that problem also? Was always getting hurt. I mean, he played in the '80s. Um, I mean, he was really good. I mean, he could throw. He had a rocket for an arm. But I, I remember because um, I used to watch him a lot, and I was fascinated by that guy, the way he threw. Yeah, I thought I remember that he started to get hurt a lot, and his career kind of fizzled out real quick. And I hope this is not genetics. So uh, I don't know. Uh, it, maybe y'all y'all know. I mean, I, I'm younger than y'all. But I don't know if y'all remember uh, maybe this uh, Lance McCuller Sr. But I don't know if this was a – if this is a genetic problem with him always getting hurt. I don't he had know. a blood clot in his throwing arm. Senior? That, uh, that um, required uh, surgery and put him at risk of further permanent injury. Well, I mean, I hope junior uh, pitches longer than senior did. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, as long as uh, Lance McCullers Jr. can fix this mechanical issue and just kind of put that start behind him, maybe he'll go back next year and make up for it or something in the 23 World Series. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you're putting way too much uh, weight on one start and one easily corrected pitch. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a really bad time to start tipping pitches, I agree. I mean, I would have rather done that in August when he – or during his rehab in uh, Sugar Land. That would have been the time, better time, but I think he's fine. Well, I, I know, but I just uh, I just think since baseball I mean, is such a mental game now, um, I, I just hope that you, there's no – you're worried about a Rick and Keel situation? I, I just hope there's no Rick and Keel situation moving forward <laughs> with how bad he performed just in that one. I mean, because that's the uh, – he was so good in 17, and then he has this one time, and he just – I don't know. I just hope it doesn't carry on. I hope he doesn't – I hope he has a very short memory. <laughs> hey, I, I got to run. We got lunch plans, and it's been great to see you guys and finally remember to get connected. But I got to take off. So, yeah, I was going to close it off at twelve. I got to I got to go down to uh, the Pasadena area myself. So, uh, yeah, right. yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you. Enjoy, Thank you. guys. Y'all take care. All, All right. right. Uh, bye, 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 Scott. Okay. Bye. 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 Here. I'll take off. Okay. Thanks, Joe. We appreciate it. It was fun. Thank it was a good meeting. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. take care. See y'all later. Uh, see y'all later at the meeting. All right. Okay, all right, bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Take care of yourself. All right. See you later, Bob.